Hi, and welcome to another episode of Dashi Notes. Today we'll be talking about the Regency era. Often when people think about the Regency era, they think about Jane Austen. And it's true, all of her novels were set during this amazing time period. When I think of the Regency era, I think of high-waisted dresses, walks in the countryside, and of course, Mr. Darcy. Have you ever wondered, where did the Regency era get its name? And why is it so special? We'll answer those questions for you here today on Dashy Notes. My name is Ellie Dashwood, and this is another episode of Dashy Notes, where we answer your modern day questions about classic literature. So what is the Regency era? It's a time period in English history that lasted from 1795 to 1837. But let's take a closer look at it today by answering the following two questions. One, why is it called the Regency Era? And two, what made that time period so special? One, why is it called the Regency Era? Historians have broken up English history into different time periods that they often name after the monarchs that ruled during that time. For example, the Elizabethan Era is named after Queen Elizabeth I. The Victorian era is named after Queen Victoria. Usually these time periods have more in common than just who ruled them. They also have a distinctive style of dress, social conventions, and other things that make that time period stand apart from the other time periods. If you compare how the people in Elizabethan England dress with the way the people in Victorian England dress, there is a big difference. So, was there a king during the Regency era named King Regent? No, there was not. In fact, the king at the beginning of the Regency era was King George III. Now, if you're from America, you might recognize him as the guy from history class who would not let the American colonies break away. But King George had other problems than a bunch of rebelling Americans on his hands. He suffered from a severe mental illness that ran in his family, and he would often have breaks with reality. Now that's very sad, however, in a king it's also very dangerous to have someone who's not completely mentally stable ruling the country. And while he had battled with this for years and made his advisors worry, he kept ruling. However, in 1810, when his favorite daughter, Princess Amelia, died, he finally had a break with reality so bad that Parliament decided to declare him unfit to rule as king. Now if a king is unfit, then who will rule the country? The answer is a regent. A regent is someone appointed by parliament to rule the country if the monarch cannot currently do it. And this might be because of several different reasons. In the case of King George, it was because of illness. Another example would be if a king or queen comes to the throne but they're too young to rule, someone will rule in their stead. For example, if a five-year-old becomes king, obviously they're not gonna have him start ruling until he comes of age. And of course, another reason could be the king or queen is out of the country for an extended period of time, perhaps leading the Crusades. So in the, with the Act of Regency in 1811, Parliament appointed the king's eldest son and next line to throne, George IV, to act as regent for his father. During this time period, he was called the Prince Regent because he was both a prince and a regent. He ruled as Prince Regent from 1811 to his father's death in 1820. And after that, he ruled another 10 years as King George IV. So the years from 1811 to 1820 is known as the Regency when the Prince Regent ruled on behalf of King George III. So the Regency era was a lot longer and spanned from the end of King George III's reign through King George IV's reign and through his brother William IV's reign too. It was brought to an end by the beginning of another very important era, the Victorian era. Queen Victoria took the throne in 1837 and a whole lot of things changed. So two, what made the Regency era so special? I think the best way to understand the Regency era is to contrast it with the Victorian era that immediately followed it. The Victorian era was a time of great and dramatic changes in English society with the Industrial Revolution, scientific advancement, social reform was really becoming a major issue because people were flocking into cities, working in factories with horrible conditions. The Industrial Age was not very pretty on the ground level. However, if you look at the Regency era, that's right before society sort of took this, you know, headlong dive into this pool of change of the Victorian era, you see a time that's still simpler, very country-based, 
not so city, and just a more innocent time period, but at the same time, it had a lot of things going on that set up the major changes you were about to see in the Victorian era. You had the American Revolution that just happened and the French Revolution. In fact, in Regency England, they lived under this constant threat of war with Napoleon and they idolized people like the Duke of Wellington who won battles against him. It was a very interesting time socially. It was also an era where there was a lot of poverty happening and there was also a lot of wealth. The Prince Regent, who was notoriously debauched both in morals and in other areas of his life, liked to spend a lot of money, which was great for arts and architecture because he spent a, money, a lot of money that way, but at the same time he did not earn himself many fans among the morally more conservative, including Jane Austen. She couldn't stand the guy, despite the fact that the Prince Regent was a very large fan of Jane Austen herself. Actually, my favorite representation of the Prince Regent can be seen in the 1980s version of The Scarlet Pimpernel. I love that movie. If you have not watched that movie, you should go check it out. It actually happens right before the Regency era begins, but still, that's the Prince Regent. You can go and enjoy seeing him in that movie. So in conclusion, what is the Regency era? It's a time period in English history named after the most notable event that happened in it, which was when George IV had to rule as Prince Regent for his mentally ill father, George III. But really, if you really ask yourself, what is the Regency era? I think it's a lot more famous for Mr. Darcy and Jane Austen. So thank you for Jane Austen for redefining a whole era of history for us. My name is Ellie Dashwood and this has been another episode of Dashy Notes where we answer your modern day questions about classic literature. I hope you've enjoyed this episode. Check out my channel, which I've learned the subscribe button is actually down there, not up here, so subscribe down there and have a great day. Music